Hello and welcome everybody to Ilanis Labs. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how you can use OpenCV to do thresholding. So what is thresholding? Um, it is the simplest form of image segmentation. Essentially you provide a value, i.e. your threshold, uh, and when you apply this to the image that you have, it'll show you all the pixels that are greater than the threshold or less than the threshold. It can be both ways. And you'll understand what I mean by that as we go through this uh, tutorial. So the function we're going to be using is cv 2s threshold. As you can see, I already have some code over here. We've already done our imports. So we've imported OpenCV, NumPy, and matplotlib.pyplot. Now, usually we use a cool image of a drone because drones are cool. Uh, however, this time around, uh, I've actually created an image. And the image that's been created is this square picture. Uh, with uh, it varying from black to white from left to right and essentially uh, it's this picture is the representation of this matrix that you see here where you've got a whole bunch of zeros on the left and 255 on the right now the reason we did this is because it's a lot easier to explain this thresholding uh, function using this picture than anything else because anything else would just overcomplicate it for no good reason now when we start using uh, cv2.threshold, there are a couple of options you can use, and that's uh, as shown in this table over here. Now, there are eight options in total, um, and basically, we're going to be focusing just on the first five. Uh, we're really going to talk a lot about thresh underscore binary, because if you understand this, um, all that knowledge tends to translate really well across to the next four options. But for all five of these, what we will do is we'll visually show the impact of applying these options to the image, to this image. Okay, so let's get started. As discussed earlier, we're going to be using cv2.threshold. Now, what we need to pass in here is our image. We're going to pass in the threshold. And we're going to pass in another thing called max value. And I'll explain to you what this max value is uh, in a little while. It's a lot easier to explain it once we run through one of the examples. And we'll actually vary it and see what the impact on the output is. And then after that, we need to specify what our option is. So the option we're going to do right now is cv 2 trash Oops. Binary. That's what we're going to do first. So this thing actually returns two uh, outputs. We're going to call it ret and thresh, and I'll show you what they are in a little bit. So if you now hit shift enter, so ret is quite simply that value over there, our threshold, right? Uh, if I change this to 12, for instance, you'll see that also changes. And then thresh is actually a matrix. Uh, and it's the actual output of this function. So what has this function actually done? Because we see a whole bunch of zeros and a whole bunch of 255s. Well, let's go back to this table for a second. Now, the way to read this is, if your source pixel value is greater than your threshold, give us the max value as the output, or give us a zero. So what this thing should have done is, if my value is greater than 127, it should have given me my max value of 255. And if it was less than 127, it should have given me a zero. So remember we said we'll talk about max value a bit. So if I were to change this to, I don't know, some random number, let's call it 39. Once I rerun this thing, all these numbers over here should actually turn to 39. And there you go, they turn to 39. So just to be sure that we just have zeros and the max value here, let's do NP unique and see what's inside this matrix. Let's see what the unique numbers are inside the above matrix. So there you go, it's zeros and 39. So let's actually look at this visually because right now we're just looking at this matrix and we don't really know what it's done. So I'm just gonna put this back to its original value and uh, we're actually going to plot three things. We're going to plot them side by side. Uh, we're going to have the original image. We're going to have the output of this function, i.e. thresh. Uh, and we'll also have a line plot where we'll essentially take 
a strip across over here, but for the actual output of this function and see how the value changes. So we can really grasp what elements are being flowed and what elements are being returned as the max value. Okay, so this is the original image that you see over here. This over here is the output, i.e. trash. And this is a line plot of what happens if you were to take a strip across over here. So as we saw over here, everything that's below 127 has been floored to zero, whereas everything that's greater than 127 has been given the max value of 255. So let's actually play around with this. Let's. Uh, Take all of this and just put it into one cell, just for the sake of uh, keeping it really simple. Uh, let's change this threshold value. And if you were to put this to 50, what we should see next is that this line, it's actually going to shift to the left and this line will also shift to the left. So what we said is look at this picture for anything where it's greater than 50, give me 255, i.e. the max value which is in accordance with this logic over here. Otherwise, give me a zero. And you can see that it's given you zero over here and 255 over there. And that's visually represented by the black over here and the white uh, on this side. Everything to the right of the 50 is white. Now let's also push this to 150 just for the sake of having uh, another example. There you go, it shifted to the right. Now the sort of border is at 150. Now let's actually tweak that value. Let's change the max value and let's call it 50. What should happen is this image should stay exactly the same, but that should drop to 50 because now for any cell, well, for any element in this picture, which is greater than 150, it's going to assign the max value of 50. And there you go, it shifted it to 50 over there. So I hope you got a good understanding of how threshold binary works. What we will now do is we'll go to the other four options. So essentially these ones over here and visually look at what the application of those options look like. Okay, going to option number two, which is thresh binary inverse. So let's just copy all of this code and let's go underscore, well, auto tab completed it for me. That's always good. Let's hit shift enter on this. So as you can see, trash binary inverse does the exact opposite of trash binary. So we've set the threshold at 150 and this time everything less than 150 gets given the max value of 50, whereas everything greater than 150 gets floored to zero. Now let's move on to trash trunk. See what that does. So what's going on over here? The logic of trash trunk is such that if your source images pixel is greater than that of your threshold, it returns the threshold. Otherwise, it just returns whatever pixel value was there in the original image. So Let's see how that translates over here. You can see that these pixels over here are obviously less than 150. So according to that logic, it should just return the source images uh, pixel value, which makes sense because we see uh, bits and pieces of, well, not bits and pieces, we see the whole of the source image over here. But once we get to the threshold value of 150, it just blanks out. So this is a lot easier to understand when we look at the graph because you can see that once it hits 150, all it's doing is that it's returning the 150 value, which is our threshold. Okay, let's move on to trash to zero. So the logic of trash to zero is that if the source images pixel value is greater than your threshold, it will return the threshold value. So you can see that the threshold is 150 and for all the pixel values that are greater than 150, it's returning the original source image. For everything else, it's going to floor it to zero. 
And we can see that happening in this line plot over here. 150 is the threshold. Everything greater than 150, it just returns whatever's there in the original source image. Everything less than 150, it flows it to zero. Okay, uh, let's go on to the final one, which is just going to be the inverse of what we did above. And you can see that it does the exact opposite of it. The logic here is that if your source image's pixel value is greater than your threshold, uh, give it a zero. So you can see it's just zeroing everything out to the right of 150. Otherwise, return the source image. And we can also see that logic playing out on this line plot where it returns the source image and the second it gets to 150, it just flows everything to zero. Okay, so that is the end of this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions about this, write it in the comment section below. Also, if you would like me to cover these other options, once again, let me know in the comment section below. And if you found this video useful, hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe and notify button. Have a good day and I will see you on the next video.